Hello and welcome to another episode of Wednesdays with WV. This is uh, episode number 27. I've got a guest here who's done it all as far as cricket is concerned. She was a fantastic all-rounder during her playing days. Then once she finished with active cricket, she ventured into entrepreneurship. Then uh, as if that was not enough to keep her busy, she got into cricket administration, proved to be a beacon as far as women's cricket administration is concerned. She's been a part of the ICC. Oh, I'll get tired soon. I need to run this show. So I think I've given enough of an introduction. And uh, the guest is none other than Shubhangi Kulkarni. Shubhangi, welcome and good to see you after a long time. Thank you. Thanks, Raman. Thanks for having me on the show. Let's kick off with uh, how it all started, how uh, people got to know you. Leg spin was always an intriguing art, but it's also very difficult. What made you take up leg spin? Um, to be honest, uh, I was bowling medium pace when I began cricket. Um, I used to bat and I used to bowl medium pace. And um, I realized that there was a lot of competition in medium pace. I actually would try out all sorts of bowling. You know, I would bowl off spin, I would bowl leg spin, and uh, I would bowl medium pace. So initially, I started off bowling medium pace. But then I realized once that, um, you know, leg spin was very difficult to play for the girls. And uh, at that time, there weren't too many leg spinners around. So uh, I started bowling leg spin and my coach coach kept, uh, uh, you know, giving me tips. And uh, that's how I kept improving on leg spin. And uh, that's how I, I started bowling. Then. See, these days, there's a lot of talk about adaptability. Those days, adaptability is something that would have been sparingly used. Even if it existed, it would have been a na nascent stage. Was it tough times for a leg spinner? Uh, not, not really. Uh, at that time, like I said, there wasn't that much of competition. And I think uh, I got it right from the beginning. So, uh, you know, it didn't work out very difficult for me. And uh, because I saw the results, uh, every time I bowled, you know, it was difficult for the girls to play. And uh, I think that is, that is what encouraged me to, uh, you know, continue with that skill. Much later, you became a captain yourself, but when you started off as a leg spinner, uh, how good uh, was the support uh, you got from your captain? I think it was it was brilliant. In fact, the first uh, series, the West, Ind which we played against West Indies, uh, the West Indian batters weren't very used to playing uh, spin bowlers. And leg spin was was absolutely new for them. So in the first uh, inning itself, I got five wickets and that was very encouraging. I think throughout the first series that we played against uh, West Indies, uh, I got quite a few wickets and that uh, encouraged me to continue bowling leg spin. Your batting numbers seem modest, but I know you are far better than what your numbers suggest. Why is this anomaly? Um, I don't know whether I think when I bowled leg spin and I was probably more successful at that, maybe I didn't, uh, you know, focus that much on batting. Um, it, it, it would have been much better today in hindsight. I do think that uh, I could have focused more on batting and, uh, you know, not, not just the bowling. Yeah, I've heard from your contemporaries, you are a far capable batter. That's why I asked your numbers are not really matching your ability. <laughs> No, I think, um, uh, in fact, uh, I, the the inning that I played in England, uh, where, you know, uh, uh, I guess I played better when, when the situation was, uh, you know, the situation required me to bat uh, better. So there was this, this situation in England when we played the first test match there, where we were 104 for five and maybe about 114 for seven. And um, that's when that's when I had two debutants with me. One was Minoti Desai, and there was Mani Mala Singhal. And uh, that's when I got my hundred, and uh, you know both of them got uh, one of them got fifties. So I think that when the situation arose, I I guess that's when I I focused more on my batting. Give me a landscape of how things were then. Obviously, there's not much money, obviously in uh, men's cricket as well at that time. How much of self-drive did it require for women to play cricket? 
Uh, initially, it was difficult for some. I was very lucky to come from a family which uh, supported whatever I was interested in. But um, I know there were many girls who were not encouraged to play at that time. And in fact, they had to, you know, actually fight their uh, fight at home to play cricket. And there were many times when I, as a captain, would go to their houses and convince their parents that, you know, their their daughters were good enough to play for the state and that they should travel with us. So in those days, uh, women's cricket wasn't, wasn't uh, considered to be a good career to uh, take up. And uh, it wasn't meant to be a, a women's game, you know. So it, everybody thought it was men who should play cricket and not women. And uh, so it, it was difficult for some of them. But then if you see, there were many of us who got support from home. And, you know, that was the beginning of uh, women's cricket uh, in general. Tell us the societal pressures prevailing then. Obviously, there have been a lot of pressure from home for girls to get married, settle down. And also the society also would have not really encouraged women playing cricket. Yes, there was always, uh, so let's say when the girls went in their whites to the grounds and all, you know, people would look at them and uh, there was some of them who would tease them, some of the boys would tease them, but uh, it, it wasn't a common thing to do, you know, playing hockey was fine, playing badminton was fine, but playing cricket wasn't what was done at that time. So yes, there were people who would, uh, you know, tell parents not to send their girls be to play cricket because that wasn't meant to be a, a woman's game. Uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, we 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 went through that stage, and we are now where we are. Did stardom exist then? Chubangi, Kulkarni, Fauzi, Kalili, Shanta, Rangasami. Did you all enjoy the stretcher of superstars then? Uh, I think uh, a few of them did. Uh, so in the initial stage, there was a lot of publicity and uh, particularly when we played international cricket, like when we played against the Australian team and the New Zealand team when they came to India. At that time, uh, you know, there, there a lot of newspapers carried uh, news items. Actually, we had a very uh, dynamic secretary that time who founded the Women's Cricket Association of India. And uh, he was uh, Mr. M.K. Mahindra Kumar Sharma. And uh, I remember uh, him going to each of the, you know, press offices and uh, giving uh, the news items and the score sheets. So I think a lot of uh, good work was put in at the initial stages in the first four or five years when women's cricket began. And some of the names became, uh, you know, household names at that time. So when you think, when you, when people talk about Shanta Rangaswamy, Diana Idalji, Sudasha, or Fauzia Khalili, there was Shobha Pandit, Sandhya Garwal. You know, there's so so many, I, I'm, I'm going to miss some of the names, but yes, they, they did become popular at that time. So like I did, I just mentioned a few names that just came off the top of my head. But uh, if you were to do things again, would you do the same things? Must have been a satisfying journey because you did a lot of things connected to cricket. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's been it's been an exciting journey right up till here, and uh, I've been very fortunate to be associated with the game uh, first as a player, and actually, right since we were uh, playing, we we did get into administration. You know, so um, although officially I got into administration much later, I know at that time it was the beginning of women's cricket, and uh, we had to help around quite a bit in, let's say, organizing tournaments or arranging for funds. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, I remember us even going to the grounds and helping to prepare the ground sometimes, you know, like laying out the mats and rolling the wickets and, you know, stuff like that. So it was all exciting. And I was very fortunate to be associated with the sport first as a player and then later as an administrator. Fortunately for me, uh, my business also uh, keeps me engaged in cricket itself. So um, it's 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 all what I love to do. As an administrator, there's always a lot of challenges. But in your case, the biggest, the biggest challenge would have been raising funds to keep the game going. Just give us a rundown on that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know where to begin because, um, like <laughs> I said, when we were playing initially, when we started playing, I remember at that time, uh, well, there weren't too many sponsors for women's cricket. And... Uh, 
So I, I remember practicing in the morning and in the evening. And uh, during the day, we would go to, uh, you know, meet some sponsors or, you know, get contacts who contacts where, uh, you know, we would find people to actually fund our tours, you know, so uh, that 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 happened right since I was playing. Later on, when I became an administrator, uh, I, I saw the balance sheet of the Women's Cricket Association of India. And to be honest, I was uh, I knew my work was cut out there because we were in the red at that time. And uh, I did spend a lot of sleepless nights, uh, uh, particularly when international events uh, were organized. So I, I, from what I recollect, the initial tour that I organized, I had a friend, uh, you know, who who took the media rights for uh, uh, the 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 entire series, you know. So um, and. Uh, so the first series was taken care of uh, well, and uh, uh, that that was that 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 felt good. But then the second series, when again I went back to some of the sponsors, uh, you know, they probably didn't think it was it. Uh, you know, uh, there was that much of publicity that they got, and uh, that is when I struggled a bit. And uh, that's when I realized I spent a lot of sleepless nights because uh, till we found a sponsor, I was wondering where the where the funds are going to come from, how I was going to you know manage the expenses of the series. There were times when I would think that um, I would have to dig into my personal finances, which we did at at some stage or the other, and uh, we had to put in our own money and. Uh, then later on, we were able to repay that. But uh, we, I did spend a lot of sleepless nights uh, when uh, during those days. Yes, the thing is that you are always far-sighted and driven. You must have also had a lot of detractors. You must say that. You must accept. Yeah, like there, there were people who kept on telling us that, uh, you know, we are not going to get anywhere. But uh, I think we were all so passionate about the sport. We believed, a lot of us believed that, uh, you know, women's cricket is going to be big. And I think the best part of it was uh, we had a lot of skilled players. So when we competed against, uh, let's say, England, Australia, New Zealand, which were the better teams at that point of time, uh, skill-wise, we were really good. You know, so uh, batting and bowling, I think our spinners were the best and uh, our medium paces also were good. So batting, we were very skilled. I think the few, uh, the, the couple of areas which we we weren't, uh, we, we could have improved on was uh, fielding and uh, fitness or running between the wickets, you know. So uh, when when we competed against the other teams, we knew we were good and uh, we felt like we could, we would, we can come out on top and uh, that that's what kept us going it was the passion for the game which kept all of us at that time you know going correct me if i'm wrong uh, carrying forward about your far sightedness you also embarked on sending a under 21 team to pakistan wasn't it and that must have been quite tough to do those days uh yes actually um, i had just uh, I had taken over as secretary of the Women's Cricket Association of India, and uh, actually, when when I decided to uh, to to contest the elections, I knew I knew our team can be the best, and uh, that is I had I had a plan for women's cricket at that time, which was uh, one at you know to grow the game at the grassroots level, to increase the domestic uh, matches. And then, of course, the international matches, because uh, if you play more of international matches, that's what is going to make your team better. And uh, that's where you can attract sponsors also. So at that point of time, uh, uh, raising the standard of our team was was important. And uh, I felt that uh, for to to for the junior girls to you know be ready for the senior team, the best thing would be to send a junior team, particularly to countries like Pakistan and uh, Sri Lanka, who at that time were not as good as as us. And Pakistan actually was was just an upcoming team at that time. And uh, I spoke to the president, and she didn't she she wanted to host uh, India in Pakistan, 
And uh, we felt at that time that, uh, you know, sending the full team would be a one-sided uh, event, you know. So uh, we decided to send the under 21, which which worked out well for us because I was very keen that, you know, the younger girls get an opportunity to play uh, international cricket or, you know, get that experience so that they are then ready for the uh, for the senior teams. As a representative of the ACC, you are a part of the ICC committee as well. How much could you achieve to promote women's cricket in this neck of the woods? As a chairperson of the Asian uh, Women's uh, Committee, um, I was I was again fortunate to be there when women's cricket began in the Asian countries. So uh, when when we were playing, or just a little after that, it was only Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and uh, India playing cricket. Uh, later on, when Asian Cricket Council started a women's committee, we encouraged the sport in the other uh, associate countries. So at that point of time, even Bangladesh didn't have a women's cricket team. And uh, so uh, uh, we had a development committee in the Asian Cricket Council, and we we spread the game in the non-test playing countries. Uh, we had a tournament in 2007 for the non-test playing countries, but we did include Bangladesh in that uh, in that tournament, and Bangladesh of course came out tops. But the good thing was. In that tournament, there were other countries which got encouraged to start playing cricket. So we had teams like Nepal and uh, uh, China and Hong Kong, Malaysia and Thailand. And uh, then later on, of course, we had UAE and Oman and the Middle Eastern countries also joining. So it was great to see all the non-test playing countries in Asia take up the sport and uh, being there to initiate the sport in these countries was was a very satisfying experience. Uh, I was happiest when Thailand made it to the T20 World Cup in 2020, I think. So the, you, you see the growth in Thailand as far as women's cricket is concerned. And this started in 2006, 2007, when the Asian uh, Women's Committee started uh, uh, women's cricket in those countries. So um, it's it's been a very good experience there, and uh, and uh, I've, I'm I'm I was really happy to be part of that. How did the rest of the world see the cricketing prowess in the subcontinent, where they're ridiculing the uh, cricketing uh, fraternity in the subcontinent, or where they're very encouraging? Uh, India, India generally was encouraging after the first, uh, after the beginning, you know, and uh, India had had uh, had a good team. Like we were always in the top four, but uh, I think Pakistan probably may have had a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, they may have had some challenges. Uh, Sri Lanka was also not bad. I mean, the, there were people encouraging them to play, but uh, yeah, in some of the in some of the uh, some of the countries, it was a challenge to encourage uh, girls. Uh, I was very happy with a country like Iran when they came to play in the Asian um, in the uh, Asia Cup, and um, uh, so the, the, these girls were not. They were they were fully covered, you know. So the, they they said it was easier for them to play a game like cricket because they could wear full sleeve shirts and full uh, trousers, and you know it was only their hands and face which was shown. So uh, they would cover their heads, and uh, you know it was it it was very exciting to see them come and participate. They were fierce competitors, but uh, coming from a country like uh, Iran, it was uh, it was good to see. Uh, you know, uh, them participating and enjoying playing cricket. You had to show a lot of grit, determination and bring all your persuasive powers to bear to convince the BCC to take up women's cricket. You must be proud that it happened. Uh, yes, it uh, initially uh, there was a bit of uh, reluctance, but uh, in 2005, when the International Women's Cricket Council and the International Cricket Council um, uh, they merged, uh, it was it was a mandate to all the countries to have just one board in and uh, both men's and women's cricket uh, under the same umbrella. 
Uh, initially, there was a bit of uh, reluctance, but then later on, we had uh, Mr. Sharad Pawar as president, and uh, yeah, he yeah, he at that time convinced uh, all the uh, the the entire board uh, to include women's cricket. And uh, once that happened, I knew once we came under the BCCI umbrella, the facilities for us would be much better. So initially, when we played, we would play on matting wickets or you know or college grounds and. I don't recollect playing too much on turf wickets when 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 we when we were playing under WCI, but uh, later on, like I knew the the grounds would be um, available for the girls, like the the Ranji Trophy grounds would be available for the for the girls. So uh, the facilities would 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 be better, and there was a bit of a gap between us and the 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 other teams, which was Australia, New Zealand, and uh, and uh, England. I used to think that gap would be bridged if we had better facilities, and uh, I think uh, the that's when this when the merger uh, actually happened. I was very happy it happened. WPL coming in is it a case of Armstrong landing on the moon moment for women's cricket? I think it is it is huge, and I'm sure that uh, and many girls have been. You know, waiting for uh, for this to happen, um, and uh, uh, we we have leagues in the other countries, but uh, we've been wanting this for a long time. This is definitely going to help us uh, tremendously, particularly the domestic uh, players playing with with the international players, and I'm sure they will learn a lot. I mean, there's a lot to learn for everybody, and uh, uh, this this the 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 exposure that. Uh, the girls will get because of the WPA is going is going to take us to the next level. Now, women's cricket from where it was and to where it has come now, WPL is also come in. Now, the current day cricketers are they aware of all the work you did relentlessly, all of you, the former cricketers? Are they aware of it, and do they recognize the efforts? Of yours is largely responsible for what they are enjoying now. Um, I wouldn't know that. I think we we should talk to them. But uh, but uh, I I I do hope that they do they do know because um, I think times are so different now. Like when we traveled, you know, we were traveling in second class, unreserved compartments, and uh, staying in dormitories and. Uh, uh, we are playing on 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 college grounds on matting wickets and all. I don't think the current lot of players has ever seen that, you know. So um, I do hope they 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 know they know they value what they have now, and uh, they they take advantage of all the benefits that that they have currently. Let's get to the other side of it now. Your generation of cricketers now things have exploded in terms of facilities infrastructure, frequency of cricket played in international cricket, and also now the money is bound to grow. Uh, do they feel that they are missed out or there is a bit of rancor, bitterness, a jealousy amongst the older generation of cricketers? I don't think it so. It has happened in male cricket. No, it's happened in male cricket. So mm -hmm. there is uh, every possibility that... Uh, I think I think uh, quite a few of us are very happy to see the game where it is, and we've seen what has happened in men's cricket. I know in the older times, like you know, uh, men didn't get uh, paid the way the current uh, lot is getting paid. So we've seen that uh, uh, the evolution. The same thing has happened with women's cricket. We are really happy that women's cricket is where it is now. I'm sure some of the older players do feel like, you know, they, it, it'll be great to give them some of the benefits. And uh, so the BCCI has started a pension scheme for the test players, and I'm sure they'll be considering it now uh, for for the other the domestic players also, like uh, what uh, you know they've they have for the men. So I'm quite sure at some stage it is going to progress into that. But uh, yeah, at this uh, at this stage, I think we are very happy with what is happening in women's cricket right now. I think uh, the the best thing is that the girls are going to get equal pay, um, match fees, and uh, the WPL. So generally, there's there's a very positive feeling amongst women cricketers, ex and current. It's a remarkable coincidence. WPL starting in women's cricket's fiftieth year. 
was it designed or it just happened i, I think it is a coincidence isn't it uh i think it is a coincidence too <laughs> so uh, but uh, it it it's great that it is happening this year and uh, yeah like i said these couple of good things that have happened um is 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 real good news for women's cricket it's good days for women's cricket for those who are not aware of what we are discussing now uh, it's very simple women's cricket i think started in 73 74 so 2023 could be the 50th year isn't it Have yes i got it right or is it is it different yeah it is the 50th year so 73 is when the first interstate uh, competition was was held this was in april uh, 1973 in fact that year we had two interstate competitions because uh, you know there was so much of uh, interest from different states that uh, they wanted to have uh, uh, the next competition soon and that's how in 1973 itself we had two interstate uh, competitions so um, yes this 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 is the 50th year with money fame and adulation likely to increase with each passing year the girls definitely need to be mentored isn't it i think so i think uh, i think they do need uh, to be mentored um you know there uh, it's it's not uh, just the finances but uh, there are a lot of expectations and uh, uh, girls want to get selected but then if they don't there could be some setback so managing finances yes is one thing but also managing uh, them their emotions i think that also is another in- important aspect which i think we need to now start thinking of Shubhangi Kolkarni is a member of the Ethics Council of the BCCI. How well has she embraced that role, or how well has the role embraced her? Um, I'm really happy to be in a position where I can make the suggestions. Uh, since I'm not the only person there, um, you know, it's like everybody has to take a decision. It has to. Um, so I'm I'm happy to be in a position where I can make suggestions and I. can be heard and um, yeah hopefully this is going to be a good stint another thing that must be really pleasing you now as a former leg spinner yourself is the success of leg spinners in white ball cricket isn't it yes um i think in the last few years uh, the leg spinners have been have in fact every team is probably looking for a good leg spinner and uh, it's it's it, uh, it it is a you find a lot of girls taking up to that skill which wasn't the case earlier you know i think is a little difficult uh, skill to uh, to pick up and uh, Uh, but i do see a lot of uh, girls trying to you know uh, bowling like spin now you are regarded as a very balanced person so i need an honest answer for this question what does india team india need to do to do better in international cricket um i've been saying this for a long time i think we've got all the skills we've got uh, Uh, we've got very good batters we've got world class batters and we've got world class uh, bowlers um the one thing that i think we need it's 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 a mental game and uh, if you see we've been losing matches by 10 runs or 12 runs so i guess you know it's 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 in the mind so i do think that uh, uh, the playing uh, running between the wickets the dot balls and uh, fielding is one area which yes we do need to improve on but uh, besides that i guess it's all in the mind we've got the skills and uh, it's just a matter of time that we'll be we we cross the line yours has been a life which has been full of success achievement accolades and how satisfied is shubhangi kulkarni you couldn't hear sorry i we yeah, are i missed that uh, in between your life has been really fantastic you had a lot of success you achieved a lot a lot of accolades you uh, had in your life how satisfied are you um it's been it's been a, a satisfying journey it's not yet over 
but uh, up till now it's been it's been wonderful uh, doing i'm i've been very fortunate to be doing something that i love doing uh, both as as a career as well as you know uh, my hobby so uh, i i am in a business which is which is uh, which is related to cricket which which is something i love and then i've been in these different positions where uh, where uh, i've i've loved doing whatever work i have over there so it's been a satisfying experience till now and um, hopefully the rest of it also turns out to be the same my question was in no way implying that you're done with cricket no i was just asking you i know you still have a lot to contribute where do you see indian cricket in 2026 or 2027 i think um, i think indian cricket is is on the right path right now uh, it's last year we started the under 15 which was one one uh, one domestic tournament which i thought we really needed to get the to get young girls to take up the sport you know and uh, to actually start competing so uh, last year we did we started the um, under 15 tournament uh, at at the bcci and uh, now that we have the wpl and of course we've been playing a lot of both international cricket as well as domestic cricket uh the under 19 team if you saw the preparation for the under 19 team was good and uh, that is i feel that uh, you know we winning the under 19 world cup was 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 because we were well prepared at that time so i think in india we are doing all the things that are required for our team to reach the top so i do feel like you know in the next this year i mean it's it's just a matter of getting there i think these are good days for indian cricket and i see the game progressing not just at uh, you know not just with the elite team but even at the grassroots level the kind of interest that uh, that uh, is is we are seeing with uh, with uh, young girls we have parents who are encouraging the girls to come and play uh, the sport so uh, i have a cricket shop and we have a lot of fathers bringing their daughters to buy kits you know which is which is a very positive sign and uh, it's it, it shows that uh, the girls are being encouraged to play so uh, i i think these are good days and i see indian women's cricket uh, yeah just on an upward uh, graph another thing which is a prerequisite for the growth of women's cricket is attracting women customers to the game what do you think needs to be done as far as administrators are concerned to bring more women into watching cricket at the venues um if you see in the last uh, uh, the 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 series against australia we had we had very good crowds you know and um, i feel, uh, from what i hear uh, they are going to allow they have been allowing uh, girls to enter free when it comes to international matches you know so i think that is one way of attracting uh, girls to uh, come and watch the game the other thing is also so i think marketing, marketing. like uh, uh, basically maybe uh, projecting and projecting some of our star players can you can you start the answer from first we lost you on that audio sorry about that so uh, bcci just the answer you just start yeah Uh, bcci has uh, already taken the initiative of uh, allowing women to enter uh, the stadium is free of cost you know and uh, i think that that is going to help uh, we we have most of our matches now on television and uh, there are many women now watching and actually the the girls have become household names so uh, i think i think the initiative has already been taken by the bcci to to encourage girls to come and watch yeah it's all right for guys to come to a venue and uh, compromise on a few things they can adjust in certain ways but do you think the amenities need to be improved for women to come on a regular basis to the venues we have we have talked about that briefly particularly now when you know some of the stadiums are going to be renovated and uh, yes that is that, that is one concern which is being addressed 
So we will have now, uh, you know, better facilities for the women when they go to watch the matches. Thank you, Shubhangi. You enlightened us on a lot of aspects of women's cricket, as you did to ensure that women's cricket also was followed by everybody keenly through your columns in Sports Star. And uh, thanks for readily accepting uh, to appear on this show and uh, provide all the insights that you did. It is lovely chatting to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Raman, for having me here. That was Shubhangi Kolkarni uh, enlightening us on uh, all the aspects of women's cricket, not only on the domestic front, but also at an international level. Uh, I'm sure that you would all enjoyed this particular chat, given that uh, women's cricket is gathering momentum. For those who joined us for the first time today, I'd uh, request you to subscribe to this channel and also press the like button and uh, to view all the earlier episodes uh, that we have put out here on this platform please uh, go to the handle of sports star and have a look at them i'm sure it'll make for some very good uh, viewing and as i always say till i catch up with you next week take care and be good